for the who. Ah, okay, great, got it. Okay, so we're online, we're on live online. Uh, yeah, thanks for everybody uh, who has turned up. And so this is our skirmishes. Um, uh, instead of our film, which is all, which is still there, but the, so this is um, our PowerPoint presentation about borders and bridges, and specifically about the border between us which is between England and Scotland. And so, I, so I'm Tamsin and that was Ursula. Thank yep. you very much, Carl. And thank you to everybody at 4W COP for having us and for putting on such an amazing array of wonderful workshops. And yeah. uh, I loved your embroidery hairdo this morning. Thank you. Yes, so yeah, um, shall we start? So basically, we uh, did we say, or oh, I can't remember what we said, did we say we're talent collective together? And and then, oh, yes, we have our border intro, don't we? Our... We were going to ask everybody who is here before we start uh, whittering on about our walk ha Have you ever walked across a border? Would you like to put into the chat or unmute yourselves and tell us, have you ever walked to, stood on, or walked across a border? And do feel free to unmute yourself if you'd rather just speak than write. Luxembourg to Germany. Nice oh, one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> have you done that, Ursula? Um, actually, I, I have, I, that, that reminds me of something. Yes. I, um, did you, there's this panel with an amazing, um, what's it, um, solar system. Did you see that tunnel, Carl? Sorry. <laughs> there's an amazing tunnel with a solar system. I, I remember near that, actually I have a photo somewhere, but we, yeah, I, I'll, um, yeah, I have. And Sonia says that she's been across borders between countries, skipping across the GMT timeline. What was oh, that? Nice. What was that like, Sonia? Was it a bit like um, unsteadying? Oh, like hopscotch, she says. <laughs> okay, ah, just going to let yes. some people in. Cadu says Brazil, Argentina, and Brazil, Paraguay. Uh huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. And can I go up here? So, so let's cross the border. To Tim us. says no, no, no. walked into Lancashire a few times and hastened back. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> from Yorkshire. From Yorkshire or from, Yorkshire. from Cambria. Okay. <laughs> and Roger says from, well, I can't make this go smoothly. Aled says France to Spain on the Camino. Yep, I've done that too. Bolivia yeah. to Peru. Kurt has yeah. done that as well. Wow. Uh -oh. Yeah. Wow. So um, I saw some others, but they've just gone up the up the messaging. Wales and England many times, and Newport and Cardiff and Wales says Aled. Oh yes, me too. I used to live in the Forest of Dean, so right on the edge. Nice. Thank you. Welcome to Fiona. We've just explained that we are not going to show the film in its entirety, but thanks to those of you that have watched it, we're going to share some slides and talk to them um, just to keep it a little bit shorter and to hopefully allow for more discussion between us all. Yeah, so shall we slide into the slide? Okay, Aled's also been from the southern to the northern hemisphere in Kenya. Ah, now that's massive. Yeah, that equator. <gasps> yeah, that's massive. Okay, so Sonia's posted the Vimeo link for the film so that you can watch it after the, you know, just in your own time if you'd like to. Thank you, Sonia. And I will now share the screen.
<clears throat> so over to you, Ursula. Great. Okay, so we started um, from our respective places. Um, and it was the 1st of June. And we, uh, I came by train, um, Tamsin came by car. And so our plan was to get off our public, uh, respective mode of transport and then meet on foot. Um, and this, this was my bus stop in Carlisle because I took the train, yeah, I took the train to Carlisle and uh, there the bus to Longtown. And you I see still... Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I came from Edinburgh. So that's a shot of me driving through the Pentlands um, in my new car. I hadn't had a car for over 20 years. So I drove down um, through the Pentlands from Edinburgh to, to the Scots Dyke where we hoped to meet on foot yeah. because we'd never yeah. ever met other than online, had we? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that was the plan to meet on foot. And um, so this is, yeah, so these are, uh, that's the middle bit, it almost looks, on, on the left-hand side, it almost looks like a hybrid land where we were, and that's why it is a debatable land, because it's shifted sides between Scotland and England many times. And um, yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. we, we all tend to think about the border as being the Hadrian's Wall, for example, but in fact, the border currently runs right down the middle of the River Esk in the part uh, of the British Isles that we were attempting to meet at. Um, so we needed to find a bridge, didn't we? Yeah, and then basically, so we had our, we, yeah, so we needed to find a bridge and we realized that the S became a bit uh, of a kind of, we, we, sort, we sort of started getting involved with like border escapades, <laughs> I was just thinking, because um, we realized that we, there is no footpath. It's like the border is closed off and there was no meeting place. That's right. So, I mean, at this point, we didn't know that. We arrived in the morning on either side of the border, you by bus, me by car, and we sort of stepped into these debatable lands, which were a five square mile area from the Solway Firth um, near where you live, mm -hmm. right up to... Langholm, which was where you began, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, and it was, it's a, an area that was disputed for hundreds of years. Um, very dangerous. Yeah. So, and, and why we, um, yeah, why we were uh, doing this really is because um, to explore the meaning of the border and then as I was sort of concentrating on the border esque here, which is this is at Longtown, I was thinking this is interesting because um, the um, the the visible plates uh, that wasn't that weren't um, covered by water in the esque reminded me of little pieces of ice. Uh, on a frozen river, on a partially frozen river, which is where people um, on the uh, border between East and West Germany, when it existed, actually used to flee. Uh, so it was, and, and it was kind of like a really interesting uh, juxtaposition of different uh, versions of border, from a very hard border to a very soft and fluid border. Oh, yeah, as it still is now, you know, you don't know. And, how and it used to it used to be very much known for groups of men in the middle of the night um, creeping and charging over the border to steal cattle and sheep and um, generally loot the houses of the neighboring clans. Um, and if it wasn't those border reavers, 
which were mostly groups of men. We haven't been able to find any accounts of women who have been involved in that. Um, then there were these moss mm. troopers, men who lay in the moss, um, yeah. waiting, waiting. So um, we discovered that it, there was this uh, this long history of these debatable lands, but a very male history. And we wanted to know, so what if two women, one from Germany, one from England, the English woman living in Scotland, German woman living in England, what happens if we came together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we were sort of uh, moving from border rivers to this border river as well, and um, sort of subverting the history of battle. Um, and there we were um, doing an action of connection, you with your um, white flag and me with my wool that I was kind of um, bringing a lot to connect. Um, well, the, the first idea was to connect a tree in England with a tree in Scotland, which didn't quite work out because of our problems um, of not find, finding a footpath. But the idea was to connect across the border. So this lovely <laughs> idea of threading from country to country, a soft connection, a colorful, soft connection, and uh, carrying the white flag um, that is the sign of, mm -hmm. of peace, yeah. rather than this um, atmosphere that there still exists um, of tension between the two sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and tension really when you look at it, because on the one hand, it's almost like now you see it, now you don't, because very often it's not visible. Um, but then um, at the same time, there's this very big MOD, you know, long time it says that. So it's part of, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it is still a militarized border behind closed doors almost because people don't expect it. And One of those places that you don't find on maps, but yeah. you stumble into them if you're not careful. Yeah. And actually, as I found out later, yeah. um, in, in the 60s... Great, thank you. You should have an option to leave the meeting if you're not happy with that, but hopefully everybody will be. Um, and this is so... Uh, could share, we can share the recording with other participants from the Congress afterwards. We've got about 150 participants registered, you know, but you're not muted. about 30 now on, oh. on this um, session. Um, so... Oh, are we all having a... OK, sorry. <laughs> I hope everything's all right. Do I need to stop sharing, Carl? Is there a problem? I don't know. I don't think so. Fiona. OK, there was just some some in, some weird other discussion. Yeah, you were. Uh, OK. OK. Oh, OK. OK, we just continue. Okay, well, do, do, do interrupt if there's anything that uh, we need to change. OK, carry on. We're fine. Yeah. OK. OK. So, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I found out that um, in the 60s, there used to be even a rocket testing site. Those sites that, ha that have massive um, um, reverberations and were subsequently um, uh, moved to um, an air in Wulongong in Australia that used to actually be tested on the border because uh, due to the skirmishes, uh, the, the battles, not our subversive skirmishes, but the battle skirmishes beforehand, in, in, in centuries before, it was very depopulated. So it was actually used for um, sites, military sites that, sh that should be out of the way and, and sort of recreated the border. And later on, when we, <laughs> later on when we eventually got to the border, Great, we discovered... The meeting, if you're not. Oh, this is very strange. Yeah, it's <laughs> very strange. Sorry about that. I'll try and uh, see if we can... Uh, get to the bottom bit. I'll, Carry on. If you I like, I'll you... just stop sharing and and um, mute Fiona. See if I can anyway. Oh yes, we could. There, there you go. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'll I'll see if I can go back to the sharing. Thank she's you. she's obviously having to manage some Thank awkwardness. You. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah. So um, yeah. Wait. And yeah, maybe I could start with, so um, yes. It so the was, next, I think, shall I move on to, oh yeah, we'll, shall we okay. come back to Scott Steich and, and move on? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, okay. We, yeah. I was just saying something about the, um, the, um, the a timing of things, uh, the idea of, of, of uh, um, getting to the identity of the border um, with us as both being different um, outsiders of different degrees, um, not outsiders as such, but perceived as outsiders, me as a foreigner. Well, something uh, happened to you that very morning, didn't it? Yes, something happened to me, actually, yes, because it was literally a month before um, the um, border, um, kind of like a new, a new border guarding system, the idea that people like me, who's not British, um, have to apply for settled status. And I had actually done that before, but I also had to uh, produce a share code um, on a kind of administrative system. So the idea of the border was actually um, sort of coming, coming at me um, after years of not dealing with the border, you know, and then, you know, as a result of Brexit, having to deal with it. Um, and, and and that very much coincided with um, the work of Rocker Guttridge and oh. Claudia Zeiska, which some of you might know about. They took a walk along the Scottish English border rather than sort of to it. Um, and that was in reaction to the introduction of the tier five visa policy for foreign artists quite a while ago now. Yes. <laughs> and that interesting, interestingly enough, was just 10 years before we did this one. And at the time it was, yeah, it was um, um, artists uh, from outside the EU or who were, who didn't get visas. And now it's kind of, it's creeping in on us. Now it's affecting people like me. And it's kind of, so the border is moving closer and, and more and more people are affected on, um, yeah. It's getting, um, it's getting tighter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. a while ago, so I, I went to Scotland 30 years ago and was definitely um, branded a Sassanach when I first arrived. But that, yeah, I've settled in. Perhaps I've got just the slightest lilt of Scottish in my voice. I don't know. But, um, but now suddenly with the independence and everything coming along, um, the question, then uh, we, 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 had, we were saying we had a game for you about um, all the different border dates, the, all the different dates that the border shifted, putting them on a piece of paper and spreading them out on the ground, calling out the dates and each person, like in that game of Twister, stepping on one of the different dates across the line, back across the line, moving the borders, moving the borders. Do you know that game, I wonder? Uh -huh. And these are some of the dates that the border shifted and the percentage of people that close, close um, vote um, of 60.1 people, percent of people voting to, for Scotland to stay in the UK, 58.5% voting to leave. So how most of Scotland did vote to leave, but in the, mm -hmm. the UK generally. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's kind of really interesting on this slide how it's juxtaposed with centuries earlier, which is quite interesting. Um, yeah. So that was the political reality. And um, how, what actually happened was that we set off on foot with our, with our flags and our um, signals and signs and thread to meet um, at the bridge and cross from either side of the river, meet in the middle. That was our plan. And uh, we completely, we were completely stumped. We were, uh -uh. there was no right to roam in England. You couldn't get across, could you, Ursula? You couldn't reach me. Yeah. I couldn't reach yes. you. Yeah. And then we realised that apart from, from the, the borderness of it, it, it there was, there's also the issue, obviously, in in which in Scotland doesn't exist so much, but in England there's the lack of right to roam, which we were dealing with as well. 
and um, um, oh God, there, was, well, there were these pretty places like here where you could walk, you know, happily along the grass, but there were places where there were cliffs right at the edge and there were these huge roads with no pavements and no verges that you could walk along. Um, we were warned against it as how, how um, dangerous it would be, um, you know, impassable uh -uh. ways. And yes, and then we were thinking, well, if we can't actually meet on foot, if we can't meet ourselves at the border, then how do we meet? If the border isn't a meeting place, then um, it actually in, encourages separation. Yes. Uh, because if only cars can can go through, obviously cars don't meet, they just, you know, go through. So uh, we think that there's no kind of, um, the border isn't something to, to, not it's open, kind of it? untouchable, it's without, it's, it's, it's beyond reach, it's uh, a border out of bounds. And with, unlike with lots of these walks um, that we've heard about over this weekend, there were symbols and metaphors that came up. So like yeah. I came across this, this wee lamb stuck underneath the bars. This was one oh. of those cattle grids that goes along a road, a country road to supposedly to stop the cattle getting across. So her mother was bleating on one side and she was bleating underneath and it was a very uncomfortable situation. Uh -huh. and at almost the same time, you had an experience like that too, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, and then also on on yeah, but then we were looking at the identity of of the border as a borderland because on the one hand, so there's there's a, a lack of a meeting place. On the other hand, obviously there is a borderland, um, and interestingly enough, there's a. Um, now it's actually applying to become UK city of culture, which is quite, quite interesting to have a land as a city of culture. Um, but also we were looking at the role of women. And, um, oh yeah, this is actually a long town uh, risk. But the role of women and how, um, yeah, the women have been written out of history because they, they weren't the border weavers. So it's like, where what were they doing? Did they have to go along with, the separation that that men have uh, decided or what happened and at the same time um, we looked into um, how the border had been crisscrossed and very often men actually um, there's higher migration patterns from one country to another specifically from Scotland into England but interestingly enough enough on one particular year in 1440 <laughs> for no reason apparent reason whatsoever a lot more women migrated to especially to, Cumber, to Cumberland than any time before or after just in that which one was, year yeah, yeah which again was like some kind of you know green of common or you know of the day or what was it <laughs> so eventually I walked all the way back to my car and crossed the border on wheels and picked Ursula up. So the very yeah. first time we, saw, time we saw each other was in fact by the side of the road. And it was about, I don't know, three or four hours that we'd been walking in the heat, trying to, trying to find yes. a way to meet. Yeah. So yeah. we went to uh, have a tea and scones at a cafe and then we drove to the border to Scott's Dyke, yeah. um, where you just saw on the photographs and then went together to the same side of the river and found a bridge to cross. And here's a little couple of uh, very short videos just to show you. Here was Ursula coming from the west side, unraveling her wool and making a connection. Across this disused And that was interesting bridge. because the first time my, my, my yarn ran out of length and the second time I um my yarn was was long enough but it wasn't strong enough so it broke in the middle and I came from the east side with my flag yeah. and that is also interesting because apart from the um 
you know, the general connotation of peace is like the idea of the border is a blank space, you know, which the white flag is kind of, there's a blank, which I love as a kind of space to fill in. Yes. Okay, yeah, cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, we made it yes. in the end. Oh yes, you've got the proper glass, yes. I've, I've got my Scottish cup here. <laughs> so it's, it's called the Thistle Viaduct, the railway bridge that we um, that we eventually met on. Um, yes. And so, yes, it must have been a right of way across there. Whether it was uh, didn't have any railway lines on it, did it? No, it didn't. I mean, I wonder if it, if and when it ever had. Um, because there was no remains. Yeah, it's it's still something something I, I couldn't figure out whether it was a an actual line uh, crossing the border line as a sort of train line as a as a anti line to the border line, which I love, but we don't know. Yeah, didn't we? What what we did do was we started walking at a disused railway. Um, station which has been yeah. turned into somebody's house and we walked along a path to get to the railway um, bridge to get to the bridge so it's very likely that it was but they would oh. they must have taken up the, yeah. the rails I think if that was the case but it was it yeah. had that sort of tinny feel to it you know when you walked across it you could hear the reverberation through the metal legs couldn't you so it was um, it may well have been like that yeah yeah so there's so, a small enough group of us that that if you like you can I can either stop recording or you can um, turn your um, microphones off if um, on if you want and please do give us your thoughts and uh, responses. Oh, Sonia says I like your use of symbolic gestures, crossing and meeting on the bridge. Did you feel tempted to read symbolism into the too short? or broken yarn <laughs> what do you think Ursula? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually Good that question. is interesting yes because it kind of re reenacted our problems um yes actually yeah yeah <laughs> I, I mean we don't we'd yes. already decided to call it skirmishes before we even started so there was this yes. definite sense of the border playing games with us and so yeah, the yarn um, doing the same thing. Um, yeah. This totally makes sense, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a borderline experience of all sorts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, oh, in our chat, maybe this is what after we saw this. Oh, Fiona, Fiona oh, yes. The border between Italy and Slovenia. That's nice. Two halves of, this, of the town. Which town was that? Um, that's interesting. Um, do was we that, have? Was that Fiona that said that? Yes. I think she left, unfortunately. Oh, so okay. She, she because that's interesting. Seen. Because it's almost like reminds me of Berlin. You know, to actually have a town at the border, whereas this border actually is very depopulated and doesn't have towns um, along it. There's no the next crossing. Comment, the next comment along was was mine about walking from uh, south of Nicosia to the north in Cyprus. Oh yes, which, uh, okay. which still is a divided city. It still has a wall. Yes, um, and it's the Turkish occupied north and the Greek south. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, and, yes, and it's, yes. It's it's very interesting how very different the two halves of the same town are. And did you feel did you feel different when you when you stepped across or when you were in the two hard? Did you have a emotional sort of different feeling? I I think so, but because I'd gone there to visit uh, to the the Greek half of the island and uh, was therefore crossing, therefore was with Greek people and crossing into Turkish territory. Yes, um, I had previously been to the north. But not in the Casilla and visited that half. I didn't have the same feeling then, um, mm -mm. because I was because I was a guest of the of the Turkish occupants of the north. Mm -mm. So I, I suppose it, I was identifying with whoever I was with. Mm -mm. Um, certainly, it is. Uh, uh, it's an. It's still an open wound, really. That's mm. it's, uh, and it's inter. Yeah. It's interesting that the harder the border, the more likely actually. 
there's a city. So on the one hand, the Anglo-Scottish border is not hard, but it doesn't have population. And where you do have a hard border, you actually have population because like Berlin and then between, um, or like you said, um, Nicosia, then in between Germany and Poland, there's a city as well. And then between Poland and Belarus. So every each time there is a city divided and this border is just empty. Which is quite ironic. So I mean, the there's, there's these tiny little villages, and you can um, walk in certain directions and cross in in certain directions. But but where the road goes, it seems to have replaced, yeah, the ability oh, to, oh. to walk. And um, and like you noticed those cattle trucks, didn't you, going across? Mm-hmm. You know, I had these oh, images yeah. of people droving cattle, you know, like the Reavers would have done. They must have taken them on foot, but yeah. not now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, yes, that's true. Yeah, because the, the, the cattle couldn't move about freely either. Uh, the fact that they had to be um, put into this tight van was, yeah, was, was, uh, uh, um, um, Another yeah, was very, really, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't really fair. No, I mean, I mean, we can make do, but they, they can make do even less, and it's unfair to have to pack them into a van just to cross. So yeah, the, re- so. the reason um, Alid is asking why it was this specific location that we chose. Um, ah, it was it was interesting because first we figured out that the um, that the geographical center point between us would be somewhere south of Pilda Water, no, north of Pilda Water. But again, because there's no public transport, um, it only works if I also had a car. And again, it's this kind of having to resort to, to, to private, there's no public transport. So, yeah, so they are making it very difficult. <laughs> we we met online during lockdown. That was the first time we'd ever met. So we had weekly and regular meetings online um, at the time I was living in England as well, but way down south. And we made the arrangement to meet a long time before somebody offered me a car. So it had to be somewhere where we could both arrive by public mm-hmm. transport and then walk in. We really, you know, we knew we wanted to walk in together. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But thanks for asking the question. Well, I think we need that, to... that, that's on. helpful to understand that. Yeah, sometimes it's worth knowing what your constraints are, and then yeah. you um, and then you just work with them, and then it takes a lot of decisions out of your hands. So yeah. Well, thanks for asking. We should, yes. Yeah. I mean, it would be actually really nice to to find a. I mean, there must be some bus at some point, but not as, probably one has to walk a long way from the bus stop can connect many buses and it would take it would be interesting to say how long it actually takes until uh, somebody reliant on public transport can get to that particular place that would be equidistant between us well you you could have done it but you would have crossed the border on the road in order to get to a place where you could meet me on the other side. So you <laughs> yeah, I would have had already go gone back yes. and forwards across the border. Yes. Well, we're getting yes. too close to the end now. Anybody else like to say anything? Because I really, well, thank you very much. Somebody says, I really liked, or Kadu said, I really liked the video. I watched it this morning. Congratulations, really inspiring. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Made us think a lot about how much cities and even relationships are based only on cars. Very sadly, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of the idea of identity while I was listening to you um, and, and particularly that area where the borders changed, you know, mm. people living in that area of one moment Scottish and one moment English over history. Mm. Or ancestrally, you know, people who are now of English families uh, are, are ancestrally of Scottish families and vice versa or whatever. I mean, yes. And who are we? You know, borders define who we are. Yeah. And and the people who live in those areas, some of the people that live in that still debatable land, think of themselves as 
borderlanders, not Scottish or English. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, there is a lot of mixing and there's always this to and fro. And just uh, uh, this morning, actually, I found a, I found a, an, an article about, um, just weirdly, I came across it like, a, st a stress at the Anglo-Scottish border and that from archaeological remains, um, um, uh, archaeologists can see that the, the, the people were in the borders were prone to some diseases because they were under stress. Wow. Because being borderlanders on the one hand and being separated on the other was this total pull and push all the time. In well, the video, I've, you mentioned uh, 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 no man's land, uh, which oh, I yes. mentioned in your talk. That, do you want to elaborate That's, slightly on that? Oh, yes. Should we? Yeah. So the idea that, that no man's land could be a woman's space. Um, yeah. So, so we... It's a phrase. It's a phrase that I've been using in a in a project that I've an installation that's just gone up here in Edinburgh called No Bird's Land. Um, and so I was looking a lot at the history of that phrase No Man's Land. And uh, um, and the most common understanding of that is to do with the, the war and, and that um, truce that um, it was said that they that the two sides had where they came together, the Germans and the English um, or both sides anyway. Um, mm -hmm and shook hands and spoke each other's languages or tried to understand each other's languages. So I've been looking into that. And in fact, um, there are all sorts of other interpretations of that phrase, but for us, this sense of, of a sort of a asking the question, is there such a thing as a feminist borderland or a feminist um, walk across or meeting at a border? Um, that phrase came into our minds because of it yeah, around mine. Yeah, it, it's like a subversion of the meaning of no man's land because obviously we know it's they, the the word the term means something else, but the idea to subvert the term actually doesn't have to mean what it's supposed to mean, um, and it's giving a space to women inadvertently because they they hadn't that didn't have that in mind, you know, just as an, as a, yeah, let's, let's actually take that space then. <laughs> and actually, um, it's interesting because then we were thinking of subversions and challenges as well. And um, the, um, apart from hitting the 10 year anniversary by chance of the walk between the other English and German women who were, going along the water, uh, the border. There is also this year's the 40th anniversary of Greenham Common. And they actually um, uh, have like an anniversary walk and they have a festival this weekend to celebrate their arrival. So, um, so there's lots, there's lots of big walks going on basically aren't there across borders which is great it's time for us to finish now so i just want to say thank you so much to everybody for coming and for watching our film and for giving us feedback yes it was really lovely yes, to hear about your border crossings and thank if you, you have anything else that you'd like to um to to give us feedback about then either leave comments on the the Vimeo uh, film or contact us through our websites, which I've just put in the chat there. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for, on, on behalf of everybody. Uh, people would normally turn their cameras on and clap or turn their microphones on and cheer. Um, I don't know what the what Zoom etiquette is nowadays, but um, oh, they or they just disappear, as, as we can notice. <laughs> uh, in the chat, thank you very much. The next um, session thank starts you. at 4.30, and it's um, Seufer and Blunt, Urban Trash Up. Um, so uh, I, I, I'll leave you to go and join that one. Perhaps there's time now for a cup of tea just before, before then, 15 minutes spare. Um, a reminder to everybody that we're, we, we run this as a team of volunteers, and so we're always after your cash. So if you would like to donate, then go onto the 
4wcop website and scroll to the bottom and you'll see a place where you can buy us a coffee um which is at least a minimum donation well thank um, you again and thank you and keep the conversation going on facebook and other um social media and blogs and so on and so forth so thank you cheers cheers great yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 I can't copy the chat. Sometimes I can, and now I can't. Oh God. Um. How do, how do we do that? Because I copied chat 